everyone. My name is Shelly. Welcome to Higher Conscious Thinker. You can find more information and resources at www.higherconsciousthinker.com. And this episode, I would like to discuss the quantum world. But before we get started, I'll let you let you know, guys know where I'm drawing this information from. And on my page under research and education, you'll have a tab for academic resources. And here you can find all kinds of books, videos uh, that are available for you to read. And most of my uh, understanding of where this is coming from is uh, through the works of Brian Greene. He's an American theoretical physicist. He has many books from The Elegant Universe, The Fabric of the Cosmos, The Hidden Reality, Until the End of Time, Icarus and the Edge of Time, it, it, as well as American physicist uh, Michu Kaku. Okay, he has so many great works. He's in a lot of a series about er various different topics of science. Also, Stephen Hawking, as you know him, he has a great book on the shoulders of giants, as well as many more. Neil deGrasse Tyson, he's also a great one. And also, British physicist Jim uh, al Khalili. I'm sorry if I'm saying that wrong. Um, he's absolutely uh, brilliant. He has a lot of um, shows about science, breaking down science, on, I believe it's uh, Amazon Prime, that you can find a lot of his works on. So getting back to the quantum world. Um, and this is where I'm drawing this information from. Let's talk about quantum mechanics. Now, what it teaches us is that we cannot predict simple experiments, much less predict the evolution of the cosmos, meaning that it is impossible to know the exact location of every particle in the universe. And we live in a world of probability, and with the world of probability, the future cannot be known. It can only be speculated. And that's why we have all these theories. That's why they're called uh, theoretical physicists. Um, because they're doing mathematical calculations and trying to figure out what are the possibilities based on past events, based on present events. Um, they're going to try to predict the future. So you have many different theories, everything from the Big Bang, um, the inflation of the universe, etc. So how we see the universe, it changes with each generation. Our ideas, understanding, knowledge, they're constantly pouring into this the human consciousness. And with each generation, it seems like we have a, a paradigm shift, uh, especially with the advancements in, in technology. Um, it can advance our science, advance our understanding. It changes the way we look at ourselves, the way we look at our world around us. And it's also dependent on societies, um, depending on how free people are. Because if you have a cap or limitation on who can um, access education and experimentation equipment such as if you only let males do it or if you only let a certain um, ethnicity does it then you're limiting the you're putting restraints on not only your society but also the world so people's access to education and experimentation the more accessible it is to anyone and everyone the more discoveries and advancements and it's sad that here in 2022 despite that um, there's evidence ever since the 1960s, especially, that we've had a boom in an understanding, a boom in uh, various different histories that are coming out. More people are able to tell their stories. It's not just in the white male perspective, but it's opening up to people are telling their stories. Everything from, you know, African Americans, Native Americans, um, women, and still in 2022, there are other societies out there that uh, they want to lock up women. They want to uh, lock up other people. They want to prevent other people from progressing. Um, and that's just sad. Uh, but when we, when we keep, when we restrain others, we're really restraining ourselves. And uh, when we, anytime that happens in society, then, then it, it's completely bad. Kind of like when you do a, an evil deed to another person, you're really doing that evil deed to yourself. Um, because it's going to come back on you tenfold, whether you believe in karma or, or co the connectedness of the universe, it's going to come back to you. So moving on about that, uh, the quantum world, diving into the quant world of quantum. So quantum entanglement, I'm sure you've heard of this term. Now, what is it? And this is a quantum connections between uh, two objects, even though con they're considered one object. So space, although it's a separate entity, does not interfere with connection between the two objects, despite the distance. And these two objects, like I said, they're considered one entity. Um, two objects, one entity, basically. And uh, they can be spatially separate, but two particles are considered the one physical entity because of the way it behaves. 
Um, their in, information can instantly uh, travel, is, is instantly available, meaning it does not have to travel through time and space and uh, to, to understand. So basically what we're saying here, let's say you have uh, one of the same entity. You have one object here on the planet Earth and another in Saturn. Okay, you whisper something to this object, instantly the one on Saturn is going to know exactly what's happening. There's not a delay, as you would see. Um, let's say that you're on your phone or you're on a radio system. Sometimes you'll hear a delay, right? Or even when, think about it like this, when, we have, when we're looking at stuff with our vision, we're actually seeing the past because it takes uh, a little bit of time for that light to reflect back and for our brains to process that image, right? So we're actually seeing the past as it happens. Um, but there's no delay here. It's instant, simultaneous knowledge. And think of the ways we receive information. Uh, we can receive information from various ways, such as, but not limited to, radio waves. Electrons and computers can carry in information through communication lines. Transmission of information versus instant information is what we're talking about here. So, and a, another thing, it's not just electrons um, that can behave as a particle or a wave, but also protons and neutrons can behave as a particle or a wave. And Niels Bohr, he pointed out that electrons, uh, d d they do not have a, a definite location or position. And he gathered his conclusion based on trying to measure, perceive, and predict the projected path and attention of these electrons. So this is building up the understanding of, of the world of quantum. So quantum experiments, um, the observer has an influence on in how the particle and the wave behaves. Um, being observed versus not being observed. And I'm sure you've heard this before. Now, this is energy reacting to energy in different states on different levels and scales. Remember that you are energy making up, and the energy around you influences how you behave. So why would that be different from an electron that we're trying to observe? Um, it's gonna, Our energy is going to reflect on how that electron behaves, whether it turns into a particle or a wave, um, simply by being observed. Uh, you are energy making contact through observation with other forms of energy being involved and interconnected. So anything that you're looking at, if you're looking at an object right now, if you're looking at the moon, you're looking at the clouds in the sky, you're making a connection, okay, with that object. You're observing it. So therefore, um, needless to say, you can you can have this this uh, uh, you're going to have an effect on on what's going on there. So what you sense and observe into your reality, connecting with energy from other sources, object to object, space to space. Um, and this is uh, determining reality. And you might have heard of Einstein's famous quote about the moon. Hey, you know, uh, when he was putting his paper together with Einstein uh, and Paul Dolowski in the Rosen paper, uh, he mentions the moon. Hey, I would like to know that the moon is there without me observing it. Um, that it continues to exist without me having to uh, notice that it does exist. And that was his uh, argument, and that was his rationale about how he was trying to interpret quantum mechanics at that time. So determining reality, is something there? Does something exist outside one's realm of observation? Because one would argue that it doesn't exist unless you observe it. And that's where Einstein came up with his statement. So, um, with quantum entanglement, it's a, a, known as a spooky observation, as, as what Einstein labeled it. Now, going to another scientist, uh, Irish physicist John Bell. So, what he brought to life is he measured electrons. He measured the spin properties of a particle, okay, such as an electron. So, and he concluded that the spins cannot have predictable measurements. It cannot determine the spin of more than one axis of an electron. And he applied the measurements using angles to enhance his research to further understand what's actually happening there and uh, how the electron functions. And that is what we have built upon today, our understanding of quantum uh, physics, quantum mechanics. And there's a lot more about it. This, I'm just giving brief histories of uh, little understandings. So let's talk a little bit about uh, quantum physics on reality.
okay, as it says. There's various different theories. I'm only going to mention a few. Um, however, it's not limited to. I mean, people can people are still throwing theories out there today. New theories are coming out, you know, I don't want to say every day, but all the time. So, and you would have heard with it, these theories. And mo some of these theories, you might think that they're the same theory or they intersect. Um, but here's what's going on. So, theory number one. Um, when we're talking about the collapse of a wave function of a particle, you know, when an electron, let's say, becomes a particle or a wave, um, what number one theory suggests is, and when I'm talking about number one, I'm just saying, hey, the first theory that I'm talking about, it's not the number one in all science. I'm just saying, number one, this is the first theory that I'm pointing out, um, is with these, the collapse of the wave functions uh, in, the scientists in this category would argue that the location is unknown and cannot be knowable. Meaning, it doesn't matter how much you test it, you cannot possibly know uh, the collapse of a wave function, when it's going to do it, how it's going to do it, where it's going to do it, and why. Okay, now let's talk about number two. Number two, uh, quantum physics on reality theory. No wave functions actually ever collapse, is that theory. And this theory uh, it expands on parallel universe, the potential for every outcome to occur. And this means that you have an infinite network of universes being multiverse, uh, fractals, a copy of the original that is uh, changed in some mi minor, minute way. And, you know, we can see evidence of that even through human genetics and human uh, history. Um, that, that, you know, some people, they look at almost exactly identical, but it's, uh, it's, it's a different version of the same fractal, if you will. And we see all that through nature, etc. So also a duplication of everything in the universe found in other universes. So everything's a copy, but a copy of it that has changed in some various form or way. Okay, so that's number two. Let's go to uh, number three, Okay. Uh, quantum physics is a ton of reality theories. Uh, number three states that there are hidden variables, okay, meaning electrons possess definite position and velocity that cannot be determined simultaneously, and there's put a caps on a limit to what we can know. And number four, wave functions are unstable. Um, and in this theory, they say sooner or later that uh, every wave function will collapse. It's basically kind of like a, a life and death cycle, if you will, spontaneous and randomly around once every billion years or so um, is what they predict, that they'll automatically collapse. It's like running out, uh, either reaching a state of equilibrium or, or completely flatlining, if you will. And uh, there are many other theories, but none have a complete overview or explanation. Um you know, imaginary numbers, what are they? Scientists are finding answers in the quantum world using imaginary numbers. Now, I'm not much of a numbers person. I'm not much of a math person. So uh, I really can't really go into the mathematics of this. Um, but uh, I, th I found that very, very interesting. So moving on, as we could discuss, there's many theories on reality when it comes to the quantum physics. And uh, another aspect of quantum mechanics is decoherence. Okay, that's another quantum concept, meaning there's alternate paths. Some paths reinforce each other, others cancel each other out. So, as you can see, it's, it's hard to figure out. There's a lot behind it and a lot more than what I'm discussing right now. Now, let's talk a little bit about space and time and uh, what Einstein came to figure out for us. Okay, now through his research, what he figured out for us, and this is what scientists build upon, is that space and time is flexible. It can be stretched, and it's not fixed like putty. It's not rigid, okay? Um, and also the universe, the universe theory, expanding universe, okay? Now, what is the expanding universe theory? It's everything is disting itself in space, as you might have heard. The, uh, it's speeding up, and it's disting itself, and pretty soon that we're going to be so far away from other galaxies, we're not going to be able to observe them. Uh, getting further and further apart, this kind of a loneliness, if you will. It's a bit of a fatalistic mentality, if you, if you ask me, that we often apply to this research. Always searching for the end and a beginning, but not how it works. I mean, it's kind of like the same thing with, with our planet. Um, here's the thing. Earth goes through periods of heating and cooling, as does the galaxy. Meaning, 
you know, when you apply heat, you expand it. When you apply cold, it shrinks it, right? So the earth grows that cycle. Just because it's uh, in the summer, we're heating up, doesn't mean it's going to stay heated and just keep on getting hotter, right? Um, and, you know, unless we purposely apply gases, etc. But, uh, and, and that applies also to, to the universe, the galaxy. So, um, and how do, you, how do you figure, what do you mean? Observation, um, processes and stages, chemical reactions, being dormant, preserving energy versus uh, to become active, releasing and using energy. And think of it like this. Water, it goes through different stages and processes. Um, water, that water molecule, it can exist in a gaseous state depending on the temperature and the conditions that it's in. It can be in a liquefied state under cooler conditions. And when it's cold enough, it exists in a solid state instead of ice. Same molecular composition existing in different states, as is the cosmos. Um, so, and, and that's why with these theories, you kind of have to uh, know a little bit about everything. You have to put all of the ingredients together. Okay, well, our planet goes through these cycles, as does the universe. To have a fatalistic cycle about, okay, let's find the beginning of the universe and the end. Uh, maybe that's a completely wrong way of looking at it. Okay. So, forces of the universe. Let's talk about the forces of the universe. Um, we have our electromagnetic field, okay? Our gravitational fields, our nuclear forces, the strong and the weak. And so let's go into those. The so, uh, electromagnetic field. Uh, photons, they're microscopic transmitters, for example, radio, cell phones, TV, the sun's heat and light. This is all reflects the magnetic, electromagnetic field. Now, what about our gravitational fields? Uh, they're made up of what's called gravitrons, uh, and gravitons, uh, they're particles of the gravitational field, the weakest of all forces, believe it or not. Now, then we have our nuclear forces. They only operate on an atomic and subatomic scale, um, meaning nuclear fusion, for example. So the strong nuclear force, these are particles also uh, call, associated called glu glu gluons, and then our weak nuclear force are associated with W and Z particles. Now, once again, the, the beginning, the alpha and omega, uh, the beginning and the end of the universe of things, seeking the origins of the universe. Okay, so there has to be a beginning, right? Because we as humans, we interpret um, time and space as linear. Okay, and that's a, that's a very human concept, as you can tell you. As Einstein said, space is flexible. It can bend. So what is the Big Bang? The Big Bang is, is a theory, and it's one of the leading theories right now. It's a theory of evolution of the universe, not the beginning. Um, so uh, to get more in-depth on this, you can watch Stephen Hawking's show called Genius, where he reveals that the pieces just do not fit when you try to place them together to describe how the universe came to be. Um, through the microwave background, uh, if you will, you have a, uh, an explosion, if you will, and they're trying to piece together the particles of where stuff would land, and it's not exactly adding up. And that's why the Big Bang continues to be to, to stay a theory, and you know we, this is so big that we can't prove it necessarily. So, the attraction, energy, how energy reacts, okay? You have dormant and active, stored and released. It can't be created. It can't be destroyed. It can only change states. It all comes down to energy, the different types of energy interacting at various different levels and stages. That's what makes up our physical world, what we here in the third dimension experience. Now, we have kinetic and potential energy. Temperature is a determinant. Also relies on the pressure, the gravitational forces, the ability to repel or retract, attract. Um, energy reacts differently in hot and cold states. Think of your body. You go through phases of being awake, using energy, and then sleep, restoring the body, restoring your energy. They both rely on phases to function successfully. So with expansion, once again, inflation and heat, growing more distance, uh, getting bigger, picking up speed uh, as we spread out. And there's a theory that, you know, as the inflation of the universe, we're going to expand so big that our uh, our blood cells, we're going to know them as, as being as big as basketballs. 
Okay. But once again, that's just the theory. So, Big Bang. Universe cooling. Shrinking until all matter is condensed and causing an explosion. Uh, a heating of the universe until. So, uh, it makes sense, right? So, what is the problem? Well, like Stephen Hawking revealed, during explosion, scientists say we should be able to make predictions of the projectiles. How matter... Uh, however, uh, how matter is impacted and scattered through space and uh, from this heating event, the Big Bang. Um, we do not see a well-defined pattern based on the way temperature would influence matter and energy to certain paths being gravitational pulls, etc. How scattered in the universe, how it's scattered in the universe. So the rate and speed of expansion does not add up mathematically as well. Also, the shape of space how it has formed and is, is forming. So we have flaws on this uh, solving this equation, being human error miscalculations based on misconceptions of time and space, how we understand the world as we know it now. Find all the matter in, in space. What about dark matter and energy? Um, ordinary matter, protons, neutrons, electrons, uh, the small percent of matter in the universe, it makes up 5%. Versus our dark matter, it's the majority of mass and energy in the universe. And to sum it all up, uh, our scientist Brian Green puts it in uh, Fabric of the Cosmos on page 312. As the universe expands, he quotes, uh, matter and radiation lose energy to gravity, while inflation fields gains energy from gravity. So, with this being said, um, you know, it is very possible that, yes, our universe could be going through these phases of heating where we're spreading further apart and we might be getting bigger. And, yeah, our, our blood cells might one day be the size of basketballs compared to what we see now. But, um, again, it's, it's not going to stay at that state or just continue to get hotter and continue to spread out until it just completely dies. But what we're seeing is that, it's going to get in a colder state, colder, 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 until it combines. It's so cold that all the electrons and all the neutrons are bound up in one, and then all of a sudden there's a spark, right? Kind of like in chemistry, where you see another explosion, another uh, example of the universe. And honestly, you know, another theory is that, you know, with, with the universe doing this, um, cooling off, causing the the explosion, the Big Bang, if you will, over and over again. And we could live similar lives in the, in the way that we do over and over again, but just, uh, just in, in different aspects. <laughs> but anyway, um, that was what I had to say on quantum mechanics and quantum physics. Um, if you would like more information, please visit the resource page. And like I said, I have many uh, videos that you can, uh, links that you can watch uh, when you go on there to other works of scientists that are very informative, as well as books. If you're a big uh, book reader like I am, check it out. I love to read books. So to find this information, it processes different versus watching it on the TV. That is, I always take notes too. That always helps connect more neurons there. But anyway, this ends my segment for this uh, episode. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to shoot me an email at higherconsciousthinker at gmail.com. Thanks for listening.